I've played Terraria for a very long time, yet this is my very first modded playthrough ever. So I thought, what's better than Death Mode Calamity to start off with? Now, before this video starts, if you're new, please allow me to introduce myself. <clears throat> my name is Ishi. Please sit back, relax, and grab a snack for yet another Terraria experience. Enjoy. Okay, as I always do, I start chopping away at some trees, since I'm going into this completely blind, so for now I'm going to treat this playthrough as if everything is okay, which it is not, and just play pre-boss as I usually do. I got forced into a cave by some very hostile slimes and proceeded to sit in water to process exactly what I've gotten myself into. I only have three goals at the moment, to get buffed up, to explore this world, and to figure out absolutely anything about this mod that can help me. Sounds pretty easy to me. After dying to who knows what, I built myself a sad excuse of a house and explored to the right of my world, in which I somehow tried trap myself underwater with 15 monsters waiting outside to shank me and take my blue shillings at any moment. Then something started like shooting these water thingies at me, and I got really confused, but I died before I could figure out what it was. So I played the smartest move I could think of on the board, and just dug a slightly fancy hole under my house that I am destined to spend much time crying alone in, wondering when I can finally break up with my fast food job to become a cringy 2016 Let's Play YouTuber who starts doing vlogs because they think they are special. That is something I will definitely not be planning on doing at any point in the future. You're welcome. I looked around in the boss checklist, and oh wow, we have a lot to do. And I'm not going to be skipping any of the bosses. For now. After a bit of running around looking for upgrades, I took to the skies and came across a really big floating lab thing. I bet this stuff is important somehow, but I definitely don't know how. So I just kind of stole everything and dipped. When I got back home, I found that a squirrel in an oddly fashionable top hat moved into my home. He uh, sells acorns and humans. Well, anyways, I started building what will soon be our Giga Tower of the NPCs. Yes, that is why I named it, and you better like it. I also use an instant elevator so that way I don't have to deal with spending more of my limited time on this planet digging another hole to the bottom of a Terraria world. Luckily, there was all types of goodies underground, and it had this super jazzy music to go along with it. I came across this super weird glowing mushroom tree, and since I was live at the time, chat was yelling at me to use this item called the Fungal Symbiote, although I don't understand why, and I will continue not to understand why this item is so useful. Oh, I also for some weird reason found truffle worms. Then that little funny voice that is just so helpful for me tells me that an evil present is watching me, and I get absolutely pummeled into the ground. Anyways, I decided to go floating island hunting, and find a star fury, which is definitely gonna come in handy. And after getting beaten and tossed around like a toy by flying sky people, I unwillingly returned home, and did some more of that luscious, beautiful farming. Oh wow, don't I just love back-to-back -back farming sessions! And to top it all off, a slime rain happened when I came back up, and my lord is King Slime big. To no one's surprise, that Brobdenagian slime liege lord instant transmissioned into my body, which caused it to instantly combust through the sheer volume of its sliminess, I guess. It can laugh all at once now, because I'll get my revenge soon. I head to the underground desert in hopes to find storm lions, which I need to summon the first boss, known as the Desert Scourge. While I was working on the Giga Tower of the NPCs, that little voice chimed in again, to give me a soul-crushing, yet somewhat good news that the Gullivan army is approaching from the east. I mean, it took absolutely forever and I would never in my life want to re-experience that grilling event ever again on Calamity, but at least we can get the Gullivan Tinkerer now. While the nurse is, uh, doing that, I decided to throw a party in celebration. Then I went back down into the cold, dark caves. But this time, something interesting happened. I found a pretty cool laboratory-looking thing. I'm not too sure who decided to just leave this out in the parking lot of this place, but I managed to snag myself a drivable drill. Now this is gonna be fun. That was the only interesting thing I found here. Everything else was useless to me. I took to the skies and eventually came across the jungle, which was pretty cool, until I accidentally summoned a queen bee. This was when I remember that she does not respawn. And as she approached, all the other self-proclaimed queens in our world would say, Queen B was yelling, slay this, slay that, in my face until I eventually gave in and died. What a horrible way to go out. That night a blood moon happened. Oh well, that's alright, a blood moon isn't all that bad. It was absolute chaos! I did not in any way expect to see a flood of about 1500 enemies attempting to storm my house, and eventually they even surrounded me from the sky. As I saw the blood moon fall past the horizon, I felt relieved, as that meant I no longer had to hear the same audio playing on loop for any longer. And I'm glad too, because I'm not too sure if I could have gone through another second of it. I decided to take a relaxing stroll back to the jungle and set up some housing so I can get my pylon system going. I also apparently put my jungle base directly above these weird plant bulb thingies that looked like they came straight out of the avatar. But since 
since they do not do anything to me, I will leave them alone. At this point, I needed to kill a boss. I was eager. So after looking into some possible weapon choices, I made myself a very nice pair of monstrous knives. These were pretty much really bad vampire knives, but I'll take them. Then I went into the desert, and without any preparations, summoned the desert scourge. Not at all surprisingly, I died. So I did a little more prep and fought King Slime. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Plot twist. I hate King Slime and want to see him die. <clears throat> Skill issue. Then, during the night, I went into the desert and broke into the desert scourge's home. He fought back, twisting and turning, trying to throw punches, but I did not let loose of the muffle I had forced on his face, and eventually it gave in. I was feeling extra cocky, because I decided then and there that I also wanted to take on the Aya Cthulhu. <laughs> Calamity thought they had me by changing up how the eye dashed towards me, but luckily for me, since I'm the most studious, I managed to once again take out the eye Cthulhu. These monstrous knives are really coming in clutch. Wow. I just killed three bosses pretty easily. Maybe this won't be all that bad. <laughs> you know what they say. I am the most studious individual of them all. In the infinite universes of issues, I am the strongest, most studious of them all. There isn't even one that comes close. If you got that reference, then you got that reference. If not, we're moving on. Anyways, I realized that I haven't even explored my entire surface yet, so I ventured to the right of my world, looking for anything cool, or may I say, quirky, I may find. And I did. I found a biome known as a sulfurous sea, and it just decided to throw me into a random event called the Acid Rain. How fun. I sure do love events. It wasn't all too hard, and after killing enough kamikaze flying fish and toxic frogs, I took care of it. I wanted to do the Torch God event, but Calamity really wants me to hate this thing, because the second I got barely touched by any of the projectiles, I instantly burst into five different colors of flames, was blinded, and might as well have been bagged and beaten to death. Thank you, Calamity. Very cool. After doing a little explosion and revamping the arena, I tried again, and after having a very intense minute, I managed to deal with the event? Boss thing? I don't know, is the torch got an event or a boss? Meh, whatever. Looking at the boss checklist, it would appear that the giant clam is my next victim. This mini boss is located inside the sunken sea, and since I don't know where that is, I decided to drill through the world until something weird happened. Usually that doesn't work out for me, but it seemed to work out just fine this time. Cool. I was kind of scared of the different things in this biome since I had no clue how much damage they did. Eventually the giant clam spawned, so I very carefully made an arena around it, and then it was time to take care of it. It was extremely basic, I'm not gonna lie. It spawned in mini clams and would teleport above me every so often to try and squash me. I mean, it is a mini boss, so it wasn't all too bad. After I killed it, I met a new NPC that sold weapons to me. I also realized that killing this boss allowed me to upgrade my gear, which was pretty exciting. So after farming for some more prism shards, I crafted the sea shine sword. I didn't really like all the other weapons I had either, so I just stuck with this one. Next up was the Brain of Cthulhu, and I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty excited for this one. For I expected this boss to be the only one to challenge my intellect, and therefore skill, and without any other thought I summoned the brain. At this point, I was out for blood. But the boss rush does not stop here. Krabulon was the next boss for me to kill, and I don't even have much of a reason to kill it other than just sport. Without an arena, I just summoned it because I was just that confident in my abilities. In a not so flashy way, I killed it and moved on. Wow, I'm doing a lot of killing at the moment. Maybe while I sort my inventory, we should take a moment to relax. Alright, moving on. I wanted to try and expand my pylon system, so I went to the ocean and put some housing down for future NPCs. These two apparently don't like each other very much, so my plan had failed. Failing is simply learning for the next time. Looking at our handy boss checklist, it seems that the perforators were next. 
I was somewhat intimidated by this one, and after making an arena and trying to convince myself that it was going to go well, I was ready. To summon I had to kill a perforator Seist, and then we started the fight. At first it wasn't all too bad, some projectiles flying around and a really big fleshy floating thingy trying to tear me apart. Pretty normal. The plot twist is that it started summoning other fleshy floating thingies that were also trying to rip me to bits. I'm not gonna lie, I was doing great, even when this really big worm thingy spawned in. And after a pretty long fight, I took out the perforator's first try. I'm not gonna lie, I'm surprised that I'm going through these bosses so easily. I wanted to explore the underworld for a bit, so I did and came across this really big laboratory. There is nothing cool in it other than some hellstone and a Muramasa. Although I cannot use this sword yet, having it in my inventory makes me feel extremely powerful. I found the tavern's keeper just taking a snooze on the floor, so I woke him up and dragged him back to my place. Because I find satisfaction in seeing a list 100% completed, I decided that the old one's army was a mandatory event for me to do, because it was on the checklist. It was really easy and I took it out with no problem. Then I had a splendid idea. Let's summon the slime god, because I'm feeling confident and I definitely have the weapons to deal with that right now. I died pretty fast. Oh well, it's nice to have an ego while it lasts. Back to reality, I guess. After doing some calamity research and upgrading my weapons, I tried to kill the slime gods again. I'm not too sure why I wanted to kill them so bad. I still had other bosses to kill. Of course I died again, but I resummoned it and, well, do I gotta say it a third time? Over the course of those three attempts, I decided that bringing all of my anger out on King Slime is just the right thing to do. It almost seems poetic, wouldn't you agree? I'd say I've done quite a bit of killing in the last while. I think it's time to take a step back and build something beautiful. Although nothing is as poetic and beautiful as you maybe taking a second to smash that subscribe button to help support me in my endeavors. I don't mean to be that YouTuber, but I just became that YouTuber, didn't I? Oh well, building montage. Ah, uh, isn't this amazing? I don't have the heart to take down the Giga Tower of the NPCs yet. I gotta build them a new place first, but I don't think I have the patience to spend another hour building them something just yet. I also expended my arena heavily in hopes that it would prove to make the future fights easier. Well, I'd say it's time to get back to progressing, don't you think? Apparently, after killing the perforators, it unlocks a new quirky ore that spawns on floating islands called Aerolite. In my opinion, it looks very cool and sounds very cool to break. And if you disagree, then your opinion is wrong. With this ore, I was able to craft the broken biome blade. Ooh, how menacing. I also crafted a few other weapons that seemed pretty cool. This included the wind blade and the air spinner. To finish up my upgrades, I headed straight to hell to have a super cool hellstone mowing session. And then upgraded my armor to hellstone. I started screwing around with the biome blade to see what it does. And I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty cool. I kinda like jab it into the ground. And based on the biome I'm in, it'll give me a different attack style, which is pretty cool. At this point, I thought I was ready to take on our favorite boss in pre-hard mode. Skeleton. Skeletron. And no, I'm not talking about the YouTuber. Hi, Skeletron. Anyways, I prepared a pretty chunky arena for this monstrous floating skull, because from what I've heard, I'm gonna need this base. Once it was night, I approached the old man and challenged his master. Yeah, that's right. He has four arms. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, I know. Oh. And he teleports, how fun. I'm not gonna lie, the broken biome blade and the wind blade was tearing up his arms, and it's such a satisfying fight to watch. Once he got down to 33% health, he regrew his arms, and I had to once again show Skeletron why he's no match for me as I proceeded to destroy his arms. And directly after, I absolutely melted the rest of his health, and I had defeated Skeletron. This was my favorite fight so far, by a long shot, I gotta say. I headed down into the freshly unlocked dungeon, and after finding everything I needed to find, I teleported back up to my base. I was almost done, just a little further to go. All I needed was to kill Queen Slime, Deer Clops, the Slime God, and the Wall of Flesh. I wasn't all too interested in Mrs. B or Angry Fluffball though, so my next target was the Slime God. The fun quirk about the Slime God is actually it's two very beefed up King Slimes pretty much, and they love to teleport either next to me or try to crush me from above. And with the size of my arena, I don't think I'm going to be able to beat it yet. So obviously, I upgraded my arena, and it was time try again. So once it was day, I summoned the slime gods once again. 
With the expanded arena, it became much easier to evade this boss, and I managed to split the Kremlin Slime God pretty easily, which resulted in me killing it completely. This left only one half of the boss remaining, so I knew I had it in the bag. I mean, I knew I did the whole time, but this just confirms it for me, you know? And with that, my hardest pre-hard mode boss yet was dead. Wow, that was intense. The Slime God gave me access to pretty much the best weapons pre-hard mode had to offer. This includes the Fractured Arc, a sword that will carry me into hard mode. I also got the Gelectic Blade, which shoots a very powerful projectile that goes through blocks, so it's pretty broken and I liked it. I decided to give it and fight the Queen Bee. I really hate Queen Bee and I'm not sure why, but I really want that checklist to be 100%, so I gotta do it. I just said men summoned her without any sort of arena, and I got way too close to dying than I'm comfortable with. I hate you, Queen Bee. I then went down into the underworld and used an instant platform thingy, and I was just about ready to take on the Wall of Flesh. Finally. Or so I thought. I took a visit to the clothier by the dungeon and got myself some accessories beforehand, because in my opinion, if I'm going to go do something cool, it better be in style, and the Molten Armor lacked that style. So after getting, may I say, dripped to the bone, whatever that means, I still don't know if that's even a term, I went to hell, and very nervously, I must admit, summoned the Wall of Flesh. My strategy was to use the Gelectic Blade and keep my distance, since it could pierce and go through blocks. And yes, that's right, when I got too far away from the Wall of Flesh, it was all like, wait up, babe, you're too far away, I miss you, and very ominously charged towards me. I didn't get very far with my arena, and died. The Wall of Flesh didn't only tank all my shots, it also also decimated my body and tore my skin off through my armor, so I knew I needed to fix something. I decided to replace my armor with stag tile armor, which was crafted from the drops by the slime god. This capped my armor to 55, which was pretty insane in my opinion. I then went back to try again. This time it went a lot better, and it was kinda looking like I may either win on an extremely close call, or I'll die extremely close to killing it. Yeah, I died not even close to killing it. Yay, how fun. And this was my best attempt at this, because I don't want to make you sit through 10 wall flesh fights. While trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong, I came across a video that introduced another strategy I haven't thought of before, and I like the look of it. So after making a double obsidian bridge arena, I summoned it again. Of course, first try it worked perfectly. I mean, second try it worked perfect. I died. And surprise, Blood Moon, thank you so much, Shreya. This is exactly what I needed. Once the morning dawned, I tried one more time, and after a very sought out victory, I stared directly into the eyes of the wall of flesh and smiled as it fell to my blade. Well, I hope I didn't like have kids or anything that'll try and hurt me at any point in the future. That'd suck. Well, we've done it. We are now in hard mode, which is the true start to this adventure. Although, what is an adventure without a name for our base of operations? Maybe, like, comment down below a possible name for our soon-to-be-glorious castle thing? Oh, what's this? I forgot about Deerclops? Oh, uh, well, that's funny, isn't it? I'll have to do that. Yeah. Anywho, with pre hard mode behind us, this marks the end of the video. But wait, before you go, this video took a very long time to make. So may I ask that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. And maybe drop a like to help support the channel. Plus, it's just a nice thing to do if you made it all the way to the end. And as I always like to say... I hope you enjoyed the video, because I sure love making them. And until the next one, goodbye.